Hi there, welcome to Practical Piano. My name is Tia. I've been playing piano for 20 years and teaching for 10, and this is a practice session video. So in practice sessions, I practice piano, and as ideas come to mind that could help you as a pianist, I stop and give you that advice. Right away, I have two basic tips that'll help you practice better. Number one is set a timer. That way you can focus well and you don't have to think about the time. And number two is warm up. I used to think that warming up wasn't important, but since I started warming up at the start of my practice, it's made a huge difference in the quality of my practice of my songs. So how would you warm up? If you know some scales or some triads, you could warm up by playing scales or triads. You could warm up by playing an easy song that you like, or you could do something simple. You put all your fingers on the keys in a row, like C, D, E, F, G, C, D, E, F, G, and you could go together and you could just go up and down. You can do that slowly, uh, especially at first. If you're not used to doing that, and or if you're a beginner at piano, it might be a little bit difficult to go quickly like that, hands together. So then you could go. And what you want is to land those notes at exactly the same time and to be very steady. You could also warm up with just one hand and you could see how fast you could go there. But the idea is not speed, the idea is that you be steady and that you start uh, putting some pressure through your fingers so that they get a little exercise. You could also mix up the order that you play. There's all kinds of options, but do a little bit of playing before you start actually playing your music so that uh, you warm up your hands a little bit. Also, if your hands are physically cold, if you were just outside, give yourself some extra warm up or run them under some warm water. Um, not if they're frost nipped, because I believe warm water is not good for that. Look it up before you do it. But if your hands are just like regular cold, put them under some warm water to help them warm up or start with cold water and gradually get it warm or go do something else for an hour and let your hands warm up and the next time you go outside wear gloves it helps all right we're gonna warm up i'm going to do my scales separated by a third so we're gonna start with g flat major Oh, I forgot to turn down the volume so you can hear me properly. I noticed with my new microphone that volume that I was playing at was, uh, it creates this bzz noise in the mic microphone. Okay, so we'll try that again. If you want to know what I mean by scales separated by a third, I'm going to link the video where I explained that up in the iCards and it'll show you what I'm talking about. One more time with G flat major. Oh, I'm very happy with that. That's the best I've done so far with G flat major. Now let's try G major. I have to figure out what finger to start on.
So what happened near the end, near the top of that scale? Uh, you saw how I paused very slightly. It's because I wasn't sure if I had gone far enough. Anytime you're not sure of what you're about to play in piano, stop. Give yourself some time to figure it out and then play. It's better to take the time, pause, figure it out, and do it right. Because what you're doing when you practice piano is you're training your brain the right way to do things. You don't want to train your brain the wrong way to do things. I think people often think that learning involves in taking a lot of new information. And it does, but not quite. Actually, the process of learning is washing your brain with the same information over and over again until you retain it. That's why it can be really hard to do things like write tests because you're recalling information on the spot. Unless you've put that same information into your brain in a way that makes sense over and over and over and over and over again, you're not going to recall it per correctly. So as you practice piano, keep that in mind. What you're actually doing is you want to do the right thing enough times that your brain retains it and then you can recall it. So when you're not sure you're doing it correctly, stop, figure it out, and do it correctly because it's important to put that information in correctly. Okay. And then A flat major is the other one I need to do separated by a third. This one is difficult for me because I have trouble remembering the fingers. Yes, we will do it together, and then we'll do it separated by a third. Okay, now separated by a third. So normally in the right hand I would go two, three, one, so I'm going to start on one. Okay, now the harder one is separated by a sixth. I do have a little, I have quite a bit of time. I am going to do a little more. Separated by a sixth, I have to do A major. Now you notice when I was first playing, I was holding my hand up like this. That's not really wrong. It's not wrong to do that, but it is tension. And so when you're only playing with one hand, let your other hand rest on your leg. That way you're not holding tension 
you'll carry a little less stress. Less stress is better for your practice because when you're stressed out, you're in your fight, flight, freeze mode, which is the back half of your brain. It doesn't learn. It just escapes. It deals with danger. What you want to do when you're learning is you want to enter the front half of your brain where you are aware and you're able to think. So that's why as you practice, endeavor to decrease the stress around your practice. Whether that means something that you might not think of, like let your hand relax, or make sure there's not too much uh, noise around you. Make sure there's not, and by noise, I don't actually mean sound, I mean clutter. Clutter will give you a, a sense of stress. If you're around somebody and you feel weird when you practice when you're around that person, practice when they're not there. If you have another task to get to after piano, make sure that you've given yourself enough time to get ready for that task. And set your timer so you don't even have to worry about the time. That way when the timer goes, you know you have enough time to get to that next thing so you're not rushed, you're not stressed. As much as possible and as much as it depends on you, Try and decrease the stress around your piano practice, and you will learn better. I don't know if I mentioned it. This is A major we're playing. Okay, now we're going to start separated by a six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm starting on F. If I started on F, I would be starting on the three finger. and it sounds weird to me so I'm having a hard time with it. Um, sometimes when you're having a difficulty practicing something it's not actually because you can't execute that thing sometimes it's because it doesn't sound right. So if you're practicing and you've been practicing the same thing for a long time and you feel like you're not making enough progress go and listen to what that thing is supposed to sound like. Because if you can hear it, sometimes that helps with the difficulty. It it's becomes less difficult. I don't know why. I've just noticed that that works. OK, let's try this again. octaves do I need to go here? I think that was too many. That's two octaves. It's four octaves. I have to do four octaves. One, two, three, four. So I'll be ending up here if I start here.
used the wrong fingering. Let's try that again. I'm happy with that. As you practice something new, don't aim to get it perfect in that sitting. Play it a number of times, look for things to improve, and continue to do that every time that you practice. And then once you've played it a number of times, you've fixed a few things that practice, move on to something else. Because you won't get it perfect this time. You just want to be always making incremental improvement on it, this practice and next practice and next practice, and then eventually it will be refined enough that it's almost as good as perfect. We can't really get anything perfect, but it will be much better. But don't expect to get it perfect in one sitting. And if you start to get frustrated when you're practicing and you're like, I just can't get it, it's okay to not get it. Your aim for this practice is just to get a little bit better than last time. So, if you're frustrated, you're back in your fight, flight, freeze. So give yourself a few breaths, calm down. If you want, try it two more times and then put it away and move on to something else. All right, that is good enough. Let's do, hmm, only have so much time. What should we work on today? I really enjoy hide and place and I practice that on my own a bit. Oh, Rialto ripples. Well, everything needs some work. It's just a matter of what am I feeling like. I'm gonna play the fugue page one. I don't like fugue and we'll have to do it like a chore for a while until it feels better. Okay, so we'll do the first page five times and then we'll move on. And if you don't like a song that you have to practice, play it five times, put it away, focus on something else because you want to put in enough work with focus, play it five times and focus on it and try and get it better. You wanna put in just enough work to improve each time that you practice. Okay. <laughs>
this one as well. Okay. Now hold the top one, not the bottom one. If there's something you don't like in piano, it's okay not to like it. <laughs> Be honest with yourself. If you have to practice it anyways, practice it anyways. But you don't have to pretend to like it when you don't. And then if you dislike it at the beginning and you put some work in and later you like it, that's great. But there's no need to pretend to like things that you don't like. Just accept that you don't like them, that they don't fit your tastes. And that will actually make it easier to practice because you can go, oh yeah, I don't like this one, but I have to do it, so I'm going to do it, and I'm gonna do my best at it. It's actually very painful if you pretend to like things that you don't. So if there's something you don't like in piano, don't tell yourself you do like it. Be honest with yourself that you don't. Do the work anyways, and maybe you'll like it eventually. And maybe you won't, but it'll be over with and you won't have tortured yourself all along trying to pretend you like what you don't. Okay. That was wrong. I started on the wrong note. We gotta start on C. quite bad. Okay, let's try this. Ba, da, da, ba. Yeah, I slowed down there. If something's not going very well, just slow it down. It means you need a little more time to focus, and you'll achieve that by going slower. I didn't even press the C that time. Okay, let's mark it out. We gotta hold this one. We gotta press those two at the same time. Okay, let's go from back here so I can feel what it's like to go into that. Okay, try that.
C as well. Let's hold. That's an E, actually. We're going to hold it. Hold it. OK. Go from here. Hold the C. Three more times. I won't have time for that. We'll do one more time. Because I want to end with a different song. Hold the F. Hold the F. Hold. There. Okay. Hold the D. Okay. the F. to do that part again. Whoops. Whoops. Yes.
practiced fugue this week. That's a success. I have about four minutes left, and we're going to end with something I enjoy. So we're going to do hide in place. And I would highly suggest that if you have to practice something that you don't enjoy, don't pretend that you like it. Put the effort in. Put your best effort forward. And then finish with something that you actually enjoy. All right. Yes, it was. Got my sharps. Sometimes this happens. When you're reading, you like skip a couple notes. Just go back and play it again. have to double check that one because it sounds funny but it is correct that's how the rhythm goes let's see if we can do it Close enough. I love this song. It's very pretty. As I got to this part, you noticed I straightened and my posture broadened and I was playing more like this. The reason 
is because you can get a louder sound when you use more of your muscles. And if you can activate all of your good posture and you can bring your arms out, you're gonna use a lot of muscle and it's gonna be quite loud and bold. So try that next time you're playing a loud section and see if it serves you. All right, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something from it, please give it a like. If you have any feedback, questions, or you wanna tell me how your practice is going, leave a comment. If you know anyone else who would also find this video useful, please share it with them. And if you would like more, subscribe.